Imagine a fortress housing your entire digital existence, from your meticulously curated social media profiles to those impulsive 3 a.m. shopping sprees. Welcome to the enigmatic realm of data centers, the silent guardians of our online lives. But buckle up, digital explorers, because these high-tech vaults are full of surprises that'll make your circuit sizzle. Picture this. You're scrolling through your social media feed when suddenly, poof, your favorite app disappears. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, for some, it's reality. In 2016, LinkedIn vanished from Russian screens faster than you can say network connection error. Why? Because Russia had just dropped a bombshell law requiring all Russian citizens' data to be stored within its borders. Suddenly, tech giants were in a frenzy, racing to build data centers in Russia, or risk being locked out of a massive market. It's like each country is building its own great firewall of China, but digital and invisible. But here's the million ruble question. Is this about protecting citizens' privacy? Or is it a power play in the digital age? Think about it. If a country controls where data is stored, they potentially control the flow of information. It's like having a bouncer for your bits and bytes. And it's not just Russia. Countries from Germany to Indonesia are joining the sovereign data party. But what does this mean for the future of the internet? Will we end up with a fragmented digital world, each country with its own walled-off corner of cyberspace? Now let's take a detour to your local mall. Remember that place where you had your first awkward date and spent hours trying on ridiculous outfits? Well, what if I told you that your old hangout spot is getting a high-tech makeover? That's right. Defunct malls across America are being reborn as data centers. It's like the retail apocalypse and the digital revolution had a baby, and it's growing up in your old food court. But it's not just about repurposing old buildings. Data centers are changing entire communities. Let's take a trip to Prineville, Oregon. Population, about 10,000. In 2010, it was just another small town. Then Facebook came knocking. Fast forward to today, and Prineville has become a tech hub, with Apple joining the party. Property values have skyrocketed, and the town's economy has been transformed. It's like a modern-day gold rush, but instead of precious metals, they're mining data. The big question is, is this progress, or are we trading our physical spaces for digital ones? And what happens to the communities that don't win the data center lottery? Now brace yourselves for a shock. If the internet were a country, it would be the sixth largest consumer of electricity. A single data center can use as much power as a small town. Here's a brain teaser for you. What uses more energy annually? A, all the Christmas lights in the UK during the holiday season. B, all of Google's data centers worldwide. Well, it's the twinkling lights that spread holiday cheer, but don't let that fool you. Data centers are energy hungry beasts and their appetite is growing. In 2020, data centers gobbled up about 1% of the world's electricity use. That's enough to power millions of homes. And with our insatiable appetite for cat videos, cloud storage, and cryptocurrency mining, that number is only going up. But here's where it gets really wild. As we make our data centers more efficient, we're using them more. It's like trying to save money by buying things on sale. You might get a good deal, but you end up spending more overall. Scientists call this the Javon's Paradox, and it's keeping environmental experts up at night. But don't panic just yet. The tech industry is in a race against time to make these digital powerhouses green. And they're going to some pretty extreme lengths to do it. Picture this. A data center in the middle of the Arctic Circle. Sounds crazy, right? But Microsoft actually sunk a data center off the coast of Scotland to use the cold seawater for cooling. Talk about thinking outside the box, or should I say, outside the ocean. Companies like Google and Amazon have pledged to run their data centers on 100% renewable energy. They're building massive solar farms and wind turbines to power these digital hubs. It's like your data is getting a suntan while it's being stored. And get this, in Finland, a data center pumps its excess heat into the local district heating system, warming homes and businesses, it's like the circle of life, but for data. But here's the million dollar question. Can our green innovations keep pace 
with our growing digital appetite? Or are we in a never-ending race against our own consumption? So where does this leave us? Are data centers the unsung heroes of our digital age, or energy villains in disguise? Are they breathing new life into struggling communities, or creating a new kind of digital divide? One thing's for sure, these digital warehouses are far more than just blinking lights and humming servers. They're reshaping our world, one byte at a time. The next time you send an email, stream a video, or leave a comment below, remember, you're tapping into this vast, complex, world-changing network of data centers. You're part of this story. And that story, it's just beginning. So, what do you think? Are data centers our digital saviors or silent energy suckers? Should countries have the right to keep their citizens' data within their borders? And how do we balance our need for data with the environmental cost? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if this digital deep dive made your brain buzz, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tales that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about our connected world. Until next time, stay curious, stay connected, and keep asking questions. Because in the world of tech, the next big plot twist is always just a click away.